The first question is from somebody called Three Film Cat on Twitter. And the, he says, or she says, Ken, is there a film to be made about the causes of the London riots? I think there's a lot to be said about the London riots. Um, and making the film is, would be primarily about making the analysis, I think, first. In other words, what caused the riot? Where do they spring from? And I guess you would have to say, or I would have to say, uh, that the cause of the London riots is even deeper than with the causes that people talk about. It comes from the society itself, which is, some would say, is criminal itself. It produces the alienation, it produces the, um, the, the poverty of expectation, it produces the real poverty, um, it produces the illnesses that we, we think of as causing the riots. So how to make a film of that, I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a complex analysis. So I think you have to get the analysis right first before you can just march in with a camera and start shooting people, throwing bricks through windows. So I'm, big question that. Let's pass on to number two. Um, two, this is Ross Whitaker on Twitter also. Have you ever considered making a change, moving to Hollywood and directing action movies? Um, no, I haven't really. I, I wouldn't, wouldn't grab me. I, I think you've got to do films or write about things that interest you, that um, absorb you, that concern you, and that way you might touch other people. If you just simply go and you're a hired gun for making a commodity, then I think that's, that's not something I want to do. It rather diminishes the medium, I think. It's like saying to a painter, OK, uh, you've painted some interesting pictures, but wouldn't you like to paint a Disney cartoon? Well, no, the painter has his own vision. Or you're a writer, um, just write a comic strip. Well, no, the writer has to write about what concerns him or her. So I, I think, no. I mean, by and large, commercial American cinema is the least interesting. Um, there's many other kinds of cinema, Latin American cinema. Asian cinema, from the Far East, from Eastern Europe, many different cinema traditions, and some of those I'd be, I'm very absorbed by, I'm very impressed by, moved by. Um, so I couldn't do that, but that would, that would um, make me pause and think, re-examine the work that, that I do with the writers that I work with and so on. But main commercial American films... Not really. More interesting things to do. Fiona Renier on Twitter. Your films are extremely heartfelt and powerful. Do you relate your own life in any way to your films? Well, that's an interesting question. Um, I, didn't, I think anybody who deals in fiction would say, make the same answer, in fact, in that you don't relate your own life directly on films but you relate what you've learned about life in your films. So there's no characters that are me or people I know directly, but what you've learned or hope you've learned about life, then you reflect in what you say to the people doing, giving the performances and try to draw out from them. So, and I guess you learn most about life through families because that's, that's where we learn about um, family relationships and family politics and um, what it is to be a child and what it is to be a parent and all that. And every familial relationship has some things in common. So even though the family relationships in the films we've done aren't a copy of my own or the writer's own, nevertheless, there you, you interpret what's in the script in the light of your own experience. Maybe a, a smaller ref, it's a small reflection of your own experiences, but it, they're there. 
And if if you if you don't do that, then then they're not true, because you can only you can only reflect the truth you've experienced. So it's a complicated answer, really, but um, it's an indirect reflection. The open fire via Twitter. What key advice would I offer young creative film students looking to develop a career after education? Very difficult. Um, I think what's often forgotten is that films are made by a combination of talents and skills. So um, you can work in films without being a director. For every director on a feature film, there's 20 to 30 at least, and maybe 40 to 50 or more people with their own skills, their own craft, their own experience, their own area that they have to be responsible for. So you can work in films and, and be in any one of those crafts. And they're all creative. It's not only the director who's creative. Um, obviously the camera person is, the sound is, the design is, the costumes, the makeup. The production assistants, an electrician handing a light can ruin a scene by an inappropriate presence or doing something. So everyone has to be sensitive to the process. So I don't think you have to be a director to be creative. If you want to be a director, personally I would start in the theatre because what you have on a film set, you have someone to advise you and to help you in all those departments I was talking about. No one will guide you on how to, how to work with actors. You can only learn that, I think, when you're not hiding behind the camera. And the place to learn that is in the theatre, where you work with actors and um, you, have to, you have to deal, confront a script, you have to work out the whole mechanism of the play you're working with. You will see what bad habits actors get and what good ways they have of working. You'll see how to trigger one and uh, a good way, and you'll how to, or you should learn what not to say. Um, and you and you deal with the substance of what the play is about, and that's the biggest question you've got as a director. It's not technical. It's what is this film about? What's the central idea? Is it worth doing? Is it valid? Is it a waste of someone's time? Do the characters ring true? All those things. What are the relationships? All those things you've got to deal with as a director. And you can learn that in the theatre. So that's what I would do, again. From Louise Penn on Facebook. What is your greatest achievement? I, t I don't know. I couldn't possibly say. Um, I, I don't think of it work in terms of achievements at all. I think of it in terms of anxiety about the next project um, and the moment you start looking back and thinking how about achievements well you might as well pack up because it sounds like you've retired so no I don't have great achievements they're kind kind question but it's not one you can really think about um, DP Campion via Twitter is it true you used to watch football as wives well Footballers' Wives wasn't my television of choice, I have to say, but my son um, directed some, Jimmy, and uh, so I watched his episodes and <laughs> enjoyed them. Um, but, um, yes, Footballers' Wives. I prefer football, really. Um, I prefer the games of football, which I do watch, um, I guess, like most people. And in fact, there's a game on tonight, a European game, which I'm going to watch in about an hour's time. So um, the team I would urge you to go and watch uh, is Bath City, which I, I, I go and watch regularly. And they're um, having a hard time as we do this interview. But um, tomorrow belongs to us, so watch out for us. OK, enough football. Um, further questions? First Light would like to ask on behalf of our interested young people. Do you think it's important to work collaboratively with a writer and or producer or do you prefer to come up with ideas alone? Absolutely not. You have to work in a team. You're always stronger in a team. It's different talents. A writer, to, to be a writer is, is one talent. It's a talent to take a blank sheet of paper, write two or three lines and in that create a character or um, 
create a character or to create a, a, a scene or an action with the vividness of the way you write. To direct a film is, is a whole other area of expertise, which is to do with the kinds of things we've been talking about, working with, with actors, constructing a sequence, working with light, with the camera, with sound, imagining the development of the film and so on. So very different. And the producer is, is very important. And I've always worked with a good producers because I, unless there's a, a producer not only has to actually raise the finance but also create the context in which you can work. So they have to be right in the centre of the project. And if you work with a producer who doesn't basically get it, you, you will struggle. So it's always a, at least three of you working together. Is it true you shoot in the order scenes appear in the script? And if so, why? No, we shoot in the order that they would have happened chronologically if the story were true. So if there's a flashback, you shoot the flashback first because that's part of the memory of the characters. Um, and it's something that the character will refer to. So you have to shoot the, the in chronological story order. And then um, the, the characters know everything, the, the, the actors know everything the characters know as you're, as you're shooting. And if you shoot in order, then they remember the scene they've done yesterday and it becomes the preparation for the scene they're going to do today. <coughs> also, it's a lot easier. And the only reason I think people don't is that accountants think that you, you save money by not shooting in order. But that's, that's a load of, if I may use a technical term, bollocks, because um, you save it in so many other ways. And the important thing is it's, it, it helps the actors on the screen, I think. And that's what you watch. You don't watch the accountant adding up his sums. So any filmmakers, join me in this campaign. Shoot in order. Easier. Easier on the brain. That's the final question. So uh, I'm off to watch the football. And um, good luck.